Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least is the Group 1 winner, Turak Toff, who will be paraded for us. Rick owns 30% in Turak Toff. He has decided to sell one 10% share in the horse. Turak, Tors, uh, Turak Toff, I should say, is uh, one of the best horses of his generation. He has won well over a million dollars in stakes prize money, including the Group 1 Golden Rose, where he overcame a torrid run to deny his rivals. He then went on to run brilliantly well uh, throughout uh, the remainder of that campaign without uh, little luck and he is back in work and he looks fantastic. He also, importantly, has a fantastic future as a stallion prospect here in Australia. He's been back in work for three weeks. He was going to contest a couple of uh, Group 1 races up to 2,000 metres this spring and also the next autumn before being retired to stud. So you're getting a chance to purchase into a horse that's already proven at the Group 1 level and he will be set solely for a Group 1 program in some fantastic races in the coming months. As we mentioned a little bit earlier when uh, we started today's, uh, today's parade, he had a fantastic clash with Star Witness, a horse that was a dual Group 1 winner who went on to campaign fa famously at Royal Ascot with placings in the Kingstan Stakes and Golden Jubilee. Well, Turak Toff was able to come from behind Star Witness in the Vane Stakes first up at Caulfield during the last Spring Carnival and beat him home by a length carrying the same weight. We've heard then that Star Witness has been sold to Witten Stud for reported uh, $10 million. When you've got a horse who's got a better record than Star Witness in many ways, the fact that he was able to beat Star Witness in the time that they clashed indicates that uh, you're getting a great opportunity to buy into a horse that not only will be set solely for a Group 1 program this spring, but as a potential stallion prospect is simply enormous. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, what can I say? <laughs> He's quite a horse, isn't he? Um, yeah. Well, that's that's the story. If uh, if you got a bit of money and you want to race a Group One horse, that's uh, uh, put it this way: if you've got about I don't know upwards of two hundred, uh, it's a win-win situation. He's worth at least two million at start, even if he never went to the races again. So uh, anything that he wins between now and then. You can have the enjoyment of racing him this spring and next autumn and uh, any upside that uh, may result or will result from uh, his future racetrack performances. Um, but obviously you've got to have a bit of money to get into a horse like him. But uh, it's a definite try before you buy a job, whereas the others um, at this stage are uh, not. The other good thing to, to think about when, you, when you're considering purchasing into a horse like Turak Toff, there are so many people who at the moment are trying to buy into European horses to bring out to Australia, to race perhaps two or three times, try and target a Cox Plate, try and target a Melbourne Cup. They're paying obscene prices and then the potential to then, if they're successful, stand them at stud. It, uh, when you're getting the opportunity to buy into a horse who's already proven under Australian conditions, is a Group 1 winner here, has run some fantastic races against the best of his generation and is on his ability, uh, clearly in the top three or four of his generation, you're getting a wonderful opportunity. And I think if you're looking down the, the risk assessment path, you'd be more keen, I think, to get involved in a horse like Turak Toft than trying to look overseas for horses that, uh, you, you know, you, you've still got this big question mark over. Yes, and I don't know if any of you remember D. Oliver's ride on him in the Caulfield Guineas, but... Um uh, he was an absolute certainty beaten in that race. I'm glad uh, you raised that, Rick, because I, I wasn't sure whether I'd be going down that path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if we'd won that race, we would have got 10 million for him. So, uh, anyway, look, he's there. If any, you got a, a bit of money and a bit of guts. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any downside in it because he can't be worth less than that, as I said, even if he never goes to the races again. And. Uh, you help the trainer pay for all these young horses. <laughs> all right, thank you, Paul. He's a beautiful animal, isn't he? Rick, just uh, while we've, this Turek Toff walks off, have you got sort of a, a rough plan as to when you'd like him to resume this spring? Uh, yes, well, he's been in work for two weeks. Um, we'd probably run him in an 1,100 metre weight for age race uh, about the end of, what have we got, end of August or early September. And we'll just move him up from there. I, I'd say his best distance will eventually be a mile. The Emirates Stakes uh, during Melbourne Cup week looks uh, a nice race for him. Uh, what used to be the Show Day Cup, won by Canny Lass and uh, 
one of my other horses, uh, is another race that would suit him. That's 1,400 round Caulfield. We may even run him in that first up if I can get a couple of uh, a couple of trials into him uh, before then. But obviously we won't run until we're pretty sure we're going to win. And we've seen Turak Toff from his limited career be very effective first up and then be able to hold that form. So you, if you do want to go down the path of purchasing into the horse, you know that there's very good potential of, of getting a quick return back on that investment. Yes. Oh, yes. Nice... Nice thing to race a horse like him. They're hard to come by. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't make your decision today as to whether or not you'd like to buy into one of the uh, the young horses that you've seen or to act off, on the Rick's website, which is uh, rickallacy.com.au, you'll be able to find uh, all the pedigrees and all the information, including some video footage which has been taken today of each and every horse uh, that has been paraded. So uh, thank you so much for, for your attendance today. And thank you, Shane, very much for, for helping us out. Uh, you've done a wonderful job and thank all of you for coming along on what's a pretty miserable day. Fortunately, uh, it stopped raining just before the parade um, and nobody got wet, but um, uh, enjoyed some lunch. Thanks, Thanks. again. Thank you, everyone.